What's up guys, this is Anthony from Hawkeye Rides. I'm here today at Regal Honda in Lakeland, Florida. Matt has given us the 2022 Honda Insight Touring in the Platinum White Pearl. Honda has discontinued the LX, leaving only two trims. Ultra modern aesthetics, 55 MPGs, which is crazy. The Insight was the first mass-produced hybrid in the US, based off the JVX concept in 1997. Then we received the Toyota Prius almost a year later. This was a two-door achieving great gas at 61 to 70 MPGs. Fast forward to today, we received the elegant and sophisticated Insight. We're gonna go over all the specs and details, starting now. The exceptionally smart exterior of the Insight is a streamlined finish with aerodynamic lines that work, starting with your grill and the engine design that reduce wind noise as well as the front bumper that limits wake. A flat underfloor designed to reduce more wake, sleek LED, daylight running, headlamps, and your low beams. All in the same with the LED fog lamps. You're gonna get the chrome topping over the grill with the high gloss black polish, protruding the Honda badging, which gives a nice elegant look to the vehicle. Cause at the end of the day, that's what we're looking at. It's a aerodynamic structure that's gonna help that hybrid technology and give you that luxury sleek stance at 71.6 inches and a height of 55.6 inches. Aerodynamic lines channel over the fenders. Because we have the touring upgraded 17 inch, aluminum alloy wheels and I like the design because it shows and stresses this is hybrid technology. You're going to have your regenerative braking. 11.1 inches is the disc reading ventilated for the front. 10.2 inches is on the rear. It's going to be solid. A McPherson strut front suspension, a multi-link rear suspension. Both the front and the rear will have your stabilizer bar. A length at 183.6 inches with a wheelbase at 106.3 inches. I like the sleek look because it's a sedan looking vehicle. Not something that comes from Mars. When you're getting a hybrid, you want something that just blends in, and I think they do a good job. The chrome on the mirror caps, which looks really nice, even if you move the side view mirrors at a set still like this, it keeps the line structure seamless, which mimics the Acura line, and I like that they're doing that. And the fact that they have the chrome, it keeps that elegance in the inside even giving a touch on the door handles. Sleek LED tail lights with a cutting edge look. Simple but a tasteful spoiler lip which gives that elegant design mixing with the chrome strip that outlines the lower bumper trim on the rear. You'll get a single exhaust outlet but it's tucked underneath which to me sets a good example because this is a hybrid. You really want to stress that it's an eco-friendly vehicle. The design of the rear tail lights also help prevent air from entering into the rear so it gives better aerodynamics so everything was thought about from all sides and all four corners of this vehicle multi-angle rear view camera cargo just push to go inside at 14.7 cubic feet there's some storage underneath the floor with the spare tire your rear bench split folds at a 60 40 split Forward-looking styling, two-motor hybrid system. The Insight performance is back with a 1.5-liter IV Tech inline four-cylinder with an output of 151.5 horsepower and 197 pound-feet of torque, paired with an eCVT transmission that's accomplishing a 55 to 49 MPGs, which is great because this is definitely the sedan and the dynamic styling that will give Toyota a run. Honda Sensing for all the trims, which they only offer two, will include your collision mitigation, road departure, adaptive cruise control with low speed follow, lane keeping assist, forward collision warning, lane departure warning, auto high beam, blind spot monitoring, and rear cross traffic alert. So you're gonna get all of the technology and safety features even if you get the entry level on the inside let me know what you think about the 2022 honda inside touring as we go into the interior go over the tech and take this for our test run entering inside the honda inside touring 
you're going to be getting 37.5 inches of headroom, 42.3 inches of legroom, ivory interior, leather front bucket seats, double stitched, eight-way power adjustment for the driver, four-way power adjustment for the passenger. They're heated. You have your moon roof. You have a clean, modern design that we have going because it has a sporty, a youthful, and a luxury all mix. You got the metal look over your air vents, eight-inch touchscreen with high resolution, which is standard. You will have your pinch and your swipe. This has your Honda Link, your navigation, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You also have HD radio, Sirius XM, and 10 speakers with 450 watts in a hybrid, which is insane. Shift by wire, so you just push to go into reverse drive, so forth and so on. You got an area here for your smartphone, two USBs and a 12 volt. You have your Eco Sport and EV mode, so you can drive 100% with zero emissions. Cup holders, you can remove them as well. You can fit about a 20 ounce, 16.9 ounce water bottle. This shifts back to give you that second cup holder. You can open this up, so that way you have even more storage. And the nice thing about it is you can put almost a liter inside here. That's how deep it is and how wide the cup holder is. So it really does give you sufficient space. The only disadvantage, putting this back in, I guess you get used to it after a little while, but at the beginning, it's gonna be a little troublesome. You're gonna get soft on both sides. You'll have your dual climate control settings, so it's gonna be very nice and pleasant for the front occupants. Leather wrap steering wheel with the cross stitch, paddle shifters, multi-function, looking at the gauge cluster, it has some digital readouts so you can go through it and you can change different settings. I would personally just leave it on your EV mode so that way you can see how much gas consumption you're getting and how the battery is charging or just use your navigation. For the door panel, one touch up and down for the front windows and I like the leather red. It's very soft texture. You could probably fit about two to three 16.9 ounce water bottles and it doesn't feel very cramped. It feels pretty wide in the front too even though everything is very accessible. Let's see the back seats. For the back seat, I'm at 37.5 inches of headroom, 42.3 inches of legroom. I got the front seats in the position that I'd be sitting. You can see no problems at all. One thing to note, depending on what side you sit, I'm behind the driver, so if I move my head to the left, the aerodynamics, it hits my head because of the way it's structured. But you know what? You're gonna probably sit more flush, so you're gonna to have to sit a little bit more in, which might be a little bit tough. We'll see how it looks in the center in just a second. As for the elbows, very soft on this side, very firm on the door panel. You could, I don't think so, just the 16.9 ounce water bottles, no vents, no USB ports, only storage behind the passenger seat. You do have an area where you can just hold on and relax. As for the door panel, soft leather red. I wish it was soft on the handle area where you put your elbows. As for storage, maybe two to three 16.9 ounce water bottles. The floor is not completely flat. Let's see how I look in the center. As for sitting in the center, headroom is still not necessarily a problem. My hair is kind of grazing the headliner. Leg space, pretty good. I'm not touching the back seats in the position that I'd be sitting. But like I was saying, because you sit a little bit more inside, I'm definitely going to be rubbing shoulders and leg space. The nice thing about the inside is if you only fit four people or somebody under six foot, it may not be too bad. I would say three adults will be a little bit tight and cramped, but the window space is good and you have plenty of air circulating. I do wish there was some air vents because it would make it a little bit more pleasant, but otherwise it sits pretty good for a hybrid. Taking the Honda Insight Touring out, one thing that I do like is this is everything, all bells and whistles, and it just feels ever so luxurious for the price point, because you can get these around $30,000. And it's hard to get a luxury type amenities with leather seats, with power adjustments for the front, plus getting 55 miles per gallon, which is insane. And it doesn't look like a spaceship which is something that does set a different appearance because when you're comparing this to any of the competitors, whether it's Toyota, whether it's Kia, anybody at all, they all have this futuristic look that just looks too much. And this actually has a grown up look and it's more of a handsome styling with a little bit of an athletic appearance and all the aerodynamics actually work. The horsepower is a bit funny, 151.5 horsepower total output. And when you push the gas hard, just like in 2021 and 2020, all of them make a very loud engine note, which is not necessarily undesirable. You get used to it. It just 
you push it, you're not going to go super fast. So don't expect that. But the luxury and the handling wise, I mean, you can see the dynamics keeps the car pretty planted. And that's because the line structures actually work to help improve in getting you that 55 miles per gallon. Got it in sport mode, 197 pound feet of torque at its best. It's just funny because a CVT transmission. So you're not feeling any gear ratio. It just feels ultra luxury and it feels like it's getting you pretty quick. So I do like that. If I put it in eco or econ mode, it's going to change the dynamics a little bit. And I like the fact that the vehicle is literally trying to do everything for me. I have the sensors on, even though I'm steering, it's actually helping me steer. As for stopping on the vehicle, regenerative braking so as I push hard I'm charging and it shows me so the harder I push the more I can charge the battery the disadvantage is when you do that you obviously can get stuck behind traffic but we're gonna see with that turn radius getting you in about two lanes giving it throttle on econ mode engine getting really loud but I am getting up to speed pretty quick if I put it into EV mode it's not allowing me to do so at this time because the battery isn't charged up enough. Visibility is great. You do have blind spot monitoring. The fact that you're getting every single safety component at these price points, there's only two trims. So if you don't wanna do the touring and you just wanna do the base model, you can do so and you still get all of the safety specs. So I do like the fact that they're offering that in both trims because that way, if you want to save a few thousand dollars, you can do so and get this under $30,000, give or take. Also has the sign recognition, so you're not going to be speeding too much. It does stay loud in the cabin though. You do hear the wheel well, the noise just really protrudes out a lot more. The windscreen, kind of blocks it pretty good but the fact that we have no dual pane windows also makes it a little bit more loud inside the cabin as for the seat comfort it is nice i wish that for the elbows it was a little bit more soft textured for both sides because it's a little bit more firm on the door panel it just feels like hard plastic instead of leather or even a leatherette and they put a nice leatherette on the door trim now there is three things that i like and three things that i dislike is anything more than that i'd be buying this vehicle so the three things that I like, price point, you're getting a luxury vehicle. Can't, get, can't really beat that and can't go wrong. Second thing that I like, 55 miles per gallon out of a luxury vehicle, that's unheard of. The third thing that I like is the ride quality is smooth dynamics. I know it's two things, but you can see it stays pretty planted for the most part. Three things that I dislike, they do still keep harder materials in areas that should be softer and then they emphasize soft areas that you're not even going to use so those things are kind of they work against each other the second thing that i dislike is the safety features are great it's just if you have them engaged you're constantly fighting the steering wheel because it's wanting to take over the third thing that i dislike about the vehicle is the fact that the infotainment screen, the way it's pivoted, it's just pivoted too forward. If you are looking at it where sun is going to hit it, where you live in the state of Florida, it's going to glare. I like the EV mode. It makes the car feel more like a library. Unfortunately, you can hear the wind and everything outside from these windows, but you have to also drive it ever so soft in order to keep the EV because as soon as I push the gas, it cancels it out and it says I need the combustion engine to do its part. So it's nice, but it also is a little bit of a disadvantage because I'm not going to be driving like a turtle. I want to give it some gas, especially if I'm trying to get up to speed going on a highway or anything. But again, long journey wise, this is definitely something to consider because that EV and 55 miles per gallon on a bumpy road, I'm sitting pretty comfortable. The camera might have a little bit of a shake here and there, but I don't really feel much in the seats and it's perforated seats, so it breathes. I'm not gonna sweat if I go on a long journey. So these are some things that you gotta take in consideration when you buy a vehicle, especially when you're getting leather seats. We're gonna take this back to Regal Honda in Lakeland, Florida, go over the reverse camera and wrap this review up. Switching to reverse, you do have trajectory, the multi-angle cameras, makes it easier for you to position any which way you need for your reversing. 
I'd like to thank Matt here at Regal Honda in Lakeland, Florida for giving us this 2022 Honda Insight Touring for our car review. If you're already a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Hawkeye community. If not, click that subscribe button. Check out the details, the merchandise, and everything we do here. Hawkeye rocks.